Hello, everyone. Welcome to Take 5, where we take five minutes or so and talk about spiritual things, biblical things, hopefully life-related things. And we've been in a long haul of the Ten Commandments. Um, I think when we started this, um, yeah, this is show, I think, 20. So when we started this, it was probably football season, and now baseball has started. But we're almost done. We're on Command 9, and it might take a couple of weeks and a number of you have commented that you're finding these helpful, so I'm glad. So I'm not just doing this for my health. You know, yesterday, I don't know, I'm recording this on a Monday. You're probably seeing this on a Tuesday or later. Yesterday was Easter Sunday. And so all of us here around the office kind of have the Easter hangover. <laughs> it's a lot of work, I'll tell you that. But Jesus started it by rising from the dead, so what what little we can do to highlight that is, is important. Anyway, I got was thinking about yesterday, and one of the scripture readings um, was talking about the resurrections out of 1 Corinthians 15. And the phrase that caught me, and this is how it applies to, to our series, the, st oh, death, where is your sting because of the resurrection? It's a great rhetorical question that the Apostle Paul asks. But then he answers it. The sting of death is sin, and then a, an interesting word, the strength of sin, maybe the best way to translate it, the strength of sin is the law. And I, as I heard it, I thought of take five, because just to remind us again that the law, especially in New Testament time, when they look at the law, um, it's, it is the spotlight on our sin. The law is, is, is the schoolmaster, to quote Paul in Galatians, to drive us to Christ, to drive us to, uh, to grace. So as we study the Ten Commandments, um, they have nothing to do with attaining God's favor. They simply are um, a good guide to life, but they are also a reminder of how short we fall in God's standard for our lives. They point out our sins. So I thought I'd just remind us that again as we go through these Ten Commandments, now Command 9. It's not to attain righteousness. It's to point out how far we fall, how short we fall, and to drive us to Christ. And to give us a guideline on how to live well. Um, remember, these laws, the, the entire Mosaic Law, were first for the nation of Israel. A new nation is getting started. Here are some laws. There are moral laws. There are ceremonial laws. There are judicial laws for this nation to get started. The Ten Commandments then would be part of the moral laws, and we see them as something as applying to us. Okay, and so now we're into the second half of the, the Ten Commandments, and these are what I call the horizontal laws, the laws between me and you. Um, they are laws to respect other people's property, other people's rights, other people's stuff, and you respect them out of love. Um, I was thinking of a verse out of Romans chapter 13 that says, love does no harm to its neighbor, which in some ways could be a summary of the entire second table uh, of the Ten Commandments. And so if you think about it, you know, to protect somebody's life, uh, do not murder. To protect somebody's uh, marriage or home or family, do not commit adultery. To, to protect somebody's property, don't steal. And now this one, to protect somebody's, in a sense, reputation, maybe even trust, but reputation for sure, you will not bear false witness against your neighbor. That's command number nine. You will not bear false witness against your neighbor. And originally, a huge application of this is the court of law. To protect society, uh, to speak truthfully when it comes to, to crimes and when it comes to the, the very doing uh, of, of social integration of, of life and people and, and uh, harm, um, we need have to have courts. And the courts have to be based on truth, which is why perjury is such a big deal. Don't bear false witness. So if you're in court, you've got to tell the truth. Um, in relationships too, uh, work and home and church, in, in some ways you could summarize this law. Don't lie. It's all about lying. 
And so that's this law. I want to pick it back up um, on Thursday. But the whole idea is that truth matters. Whether you're hearing it from a politician or hearing it from a news media or talking to your friend or at work, truth matters. And that's what this command is all about. Um, we'll look at it in a little more detail um, next time. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Tell the truth, and we'll talk more about it Thursday. See ya.